Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How, and today we are working on the D-Max, and in particular, we're working on the gearbox. Well, kinda, we're working on the brains of the gearbox. Today, we're gonna be installing and testing the new torque converter lockup kit from Boost Tech. We're gonna be doing the install. This one is super simple, no tools required, just a couple of zip ties and a bit of know-how. Then we're gonna get this on the road and give it a test. So without further ado, Let's get started. So this is the kit. This is a dead simple install. Comes in a cool little bag, just like this, a nice little carry case. We have the brains of the operation here. This is the Boost Tech can bus or can hacker. So that's the brains, we wanna keep care of that. And then check this loom out. I'll pull it out of the bag. And here it is here. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I've sort of gone about that a little bit too much. But the, the, if you get a loom that's all nice and properly connected, everything's all perfect. We've even got the way it's all connected together, that's awesome. So straight away, you know you're getting a quality kit. We've got all of our relays ready to roll. Everything is pinned to be full plug and play. And we even have some heat sinks and that sort of jazz all fused. And we even have our little button. I understand there's some new ones of these on the way, but at the moment, that is the plug and play that'll go in the center console that we'll have a look at in just a second. So as you can see, great quality kit. Now, as far as torque converters, what the heck are they and do you need one? Now there is a absolute ton of information of these online you can go and check out for yourself. So do a bit of Googling. The basics for me though, come down to three things. And those are gonna be usually these top three things. One being, you're gonna feel like there's a little bit more power and that's because you're, you're transferring that the, the torque from the engine to the turny things, to the wheels much more efficiently because you're gonna be in that locked up state more frequently when you are on the freeway going up those hills. Because of that too is you're probably gonna be seeing a bit of a decent bump in fuel economy when you are on those longer stretch, those longer drives. You're not gonna be locking, unlocking, locking, unlocking and slip through the torque converter like these things tend to do, particularly when you're going up those slight inclines, it will stay locked, which means you're not wasting that fuel through that process. And then three for me, because you're more frequently in that locked up state, you're not slipping and dropping in between gears all the time like these do on the freeway, that's going to reduce the amount of heat that's coming through your torque converter. The more these torque converters on any car slips, particularly one under a heavy load, AKA towing, you, you will see if, you, if you're using the, any sort of app that monitors torque converter, I'll put the link to that in the video. I still use that setup on this thing. Particularly when you're towing, you can monitor those temps and you'll just see it absolutely skyrocket as soon as you're in that unlocked and slip state. So keeping the thing locked longer, it's gonna ultimately reduce your temps. And in my opinion, when you are at full load, when you're particularly when you're towing or the thing's completely loaded up, those three benefits only accelerate. But anyway, I reckon enough jibber jabber. We're gonna get this installed, then hang around because we're gonna go and take it on a road test and I'll show you the different functions that it has and kind of how it works. So all you're gonna need is the ECU and our wiring loom. He's done all the hard work for us, which is excellent. We either just need a couple of pry tools so we can remove our trim so we can install our little button and then a couple of zip ties and that's probably all we need. We're gonna pick this up, head on over to the passenger side of the D-Max and get started. So here we are around the passenger side. We've got our kit, we've got our ECU and our loom ready to roll here. I recommend pushing that chair all the way back. The first step is we need to get our glove box out of the way. The easiest way to do that is to grab underneath and pull forward. You can see the little tabs at the top here. Just need to pull it out at the angle. The next thing is to make sure before we go unplugging anything, we wanna make sure we have either disconnected the battery. I always like to make sure I do that anytime I'm plugging or unplugging anything to do with ECUs. Or if you've got a key, make sure it's not in. Or if you've got proximity keys, make sure they're not in the vehicle. So from here, our next step, we'll just an extra bit of trim just to save some space. It gives you a bit more access is remove this little shroud here. To do that, if you've got a, a trim tool handy, that will come in handy, just pry that out of the way. Flathead screwdriver, or you might get lucky to be able to pull it out without any of those things, but that's the next step. This guy here, just to remove that, so it gives us a bit more space. Right, so we've got this guy out of the way, so next step is to start connecting up our new loom. Now you can just sort of break it up here and take it, take it apart. Most of the extra cabling you can see here is for the switch. You'll have a big MOS connector here, we have our relays here, our heat sink, and then we've got two connectors, one with fuses, and then this one here with some shielded black. This guy will do second. The first one you wanna get is the one with the fuses on here. 
what we want to do, we can see in here now, uh, this guy right here is our TCM. That's our transmission control module. We can see our actual ECU hiding to the left of it there. That's the big boy. It does all the main brains. Uh, but the one we want is our transmission brain here. So we've got three plugs, one, two, and three. We want to disconnect the bottom section, and that's what's then going to clip in to our patch loom right here. So super simple, we can just press and pull a little bit like that. And then we just wanna get that lined up, grab our female version of the patch end, and then that should click in. Now it's super important here that we hear them click. It's a factory OEM, and there we go, there's our click. So that's that end. And then on our patch side, we wanna do the same, is clicking back into the original ECU. Same story, look for the click just like that, so it clicks into place, and you know you are all good. So that's that one. The next step then is to do our extra, the second, the second patch lead here, and this one goes into the top. So if you have a look at your TCM here again, we've just done the bottom one, we've got a middle one, we'll leave him alone, we wanna do our top one here. So same as before, pull our little connector there, and then we have our female end, same as before then, and get it around in the right orientation, line it up, and then click it into place. And then same story here, we wanna get this guy, connect it back up there, make sure it clicks into place. So coming along nicely, would you believe that's about as hard as it gets? So we've only got a couple of more things to do. You wanna do a bit of cable management, we've got plenty of space in the back here, we can sort of tuck everything away, just make sure everything's nice and secure, use your zip ties and that kind of thing. We then wanna route a couple of things. These relay pins, we can make sure they're nice and secured up out of the way as well. And then we've got two things left. We have our connection point here, which connects to our new ECU here, we're gonna do that. But before you do, we also then have our heat sink. Now, there's a couple of things with this. We want these to get landed over this side, ideally, because there's tons of space in there. In the back there, we've got plenty of room that we can tuck everything away. I'm gonna be using some double-sided tape on the back of this guy to secure it in there, but you can use some zip ties or that kind of thing. Just make sure it's not in the way of any of the um, AC kind of controls in that back corner. So you'll see what I mean when you're in there. Before you connect that though, just grab a couple of things. We have the only thing left, which is our switch loom. This and the other two, are this guy and your heat sink, just route in between the support bracket here. So you wanna route it all the way through, get it down so it's all nice and behind the gearbox, it's gonna live in there. So it all pops up on this side. So once everything is all nice and secured here, we should have our connector here lined about there. We've got a nice spot right there where our ECU is gonna live. So our next step is essentially connecting these guys together. It is dead simple, and it's just a matter of connecting. It only goes in one way. Once again, look for the click. Once that's in place, we can get this guy all tucked down underneath there, and we can zip tie it into place. Now, once you're here, you should only have two bits left. We should have our heat sink here. That's the gold unit here. And then we have our actual plug. So the plug we're gonna route through to the center console in a minute. The last thing we need to tidy up here is our little heat sink. Now, it's really critical that this attaches to a metal surface. We don't wanna be sort of putting it on anything plastic because this guy can get warm. So we want it to help dissipate the heat. And the best way we can do that is have this attached to some metal. So the best thing is for the D-Max, we have this extra little bracket here, which is conveniently metal, and it's even got a couple of little holes in it, which we might be able to use. So the next step is to just use some self-tappers or some little bolts, attach this guy into there. So it is all locked away and attached directly to the metal surface. We'll probably have to pull through a little bit of this. I've made it a little too tight, but we'll get that squared away so that's in place. And then from there, we only have one bit to go, which is just routing our plug. We'll sort of be disconnecting this guy and then getting it up underneath our trim through to the center console. So there we go, there is our heat sink all connected up underneath there. We've just got a little eight mil screw there firmly holding that in place. So that'll help dissipate some of that heat. We've got everything else all nice and tucked up underneath here. This is ready to go back in place the same way as we removed it. So we can get that back into position and then just push him home. 
same story, it should just click into place. From there, we just need to get our switch. So we need to route that through underneath here. If you've seen any of my other videos, dead simple. We can route that up underneath here. And the easiest way to get in underneath here is just by popping off the black section here around the sides. So we just need to get our trim removal tool. That just pops up like that. Same on the other side. Then once they're out of place like that, you can just gently sort of pry them up. They are separate like that. And then the center section pops up. And then from there, you just need to decide which one of the plugs you're gonna use. For me, I'm just gonna make a custom section just over here, because I've got both of my brake controller controls sitting in the side there. So this guy is going to get replaced probably up the top here. So I'm gonna drill a hole. And then uh, this guy, will get fed through into the top here. So that's the next step is to route this guy home, pop out one of your spares, and then connect this guy into place. And here we go, we're all back together like I bought one. You can't even tell except we have a new little button that is installed over here and we are ready to give it a test. So I'm going to flick over to first person mode. I'm gonna get on the freeway and I'm gonna show you how this thing works. All right, so we're getting on the freeway. And you'll see once we hit 77, you, you should hear, you can just hear a bit of a click. There it goes. And torque converter locks up. Now, if I go down here to the button, straight away, you can see that. You can hear the slight click, we unlock. Press it again, boom, we see the revs drop down. Try again. If I give it some gas, classic D-Max will flare up in the revs like you just saw. If I slow down a little bit, we've still got it off here. And if I accelerate even just a little bit, it'll gear down, we'll flare up. Looks like we went down two there before it then eventually, eventually, eventually we'll change down like that. Now, if we repeat that, I'll just slow down and it's good. We've got a bit of a hill uh, coming up here as well. So we'll slow down, we'll put the, the lock up kit on. So we'll press the button. Straight away, we can hear a click. Now, if I accelerate the same, Look what's happening. We're going up a, up a hill here. I'm accelerating the same. We're slowly going up. I'm not flooring it. But you can see we're not flaring. We're not dropping down. We're just maintaining the speed. And that's the biggest thing that I've noticed is instead of flaring up and down, like I come up and down the M1 here near where I am fairly regularly and even on the slightest incline, the thing will wanna kick back, flare away and change gears, whereas now, with this torque converter lockup kit locked in, we'll just continue to sort of cruise along, and, and there's no flaring up or down or anything like that. Cruise control is an absolute dream now. There's no sort of kicking back and carrying on. It will just keep just gently cruising along. I mean, look at this. We're doing all of 1400 RPM, roughly 100 here. We've got a slow poke in the middle here. We'll, we'll get past him. But yeah, that's, that's the big thing for me, is it just, it actually turns your cruise control into proper cruise, because that's exactly what it does. It just cruises along just like that. Now, one of the other cool modes, I think, particularly if you're towing, this is gonna be massive, is you never used to be able to use your manual gears in full cruise control. This, it lets you do it. So we're in cruise control here, and normally what will happen, if I flick this over to manual mode, as you guys know, It'll flick over to your actual gears and we're, we're slowing down. So while I've got gears now, I can fly through those. Cruise control deactivates. Now with this, we hit the res button here in the middle. You'll see, see that changed over. And now, if I normally set the cruise control again, see how it's back to D? Even though we're still in manual mode, we're now in D. I can change my speed up here, hit the old plus get back up to 110 and check it out. Boom, we drop back a gear. Back again, we're in fourth. Manual mode, but full radar cruise control. So that's pretty cool. That's a function I reckon should have come out from factory. You can now basically drive the thing like a manual if you want, whilst maintaining full radar cruise control. So that's pretty cool. So they're the main two modes that I found to be super, super great about the lockup kit, it just, it honestly transforms the way you, you drive on, on long drives because it just, it 
it just stops that flaring. I, I, can't, I can't emphasize that enough. And it just, even here, right? So we slowed down, that guy up there moved out of the way. We've got back up to our our set speed here on cruise. Normally, if you guys, you guys would know this, right? When you when that happens, normally it would kick back, carry on to get up to the speed. But as you saw, nice smooth. We didn't we didn't kick down, we didn't carry on. It just applied the power because we're nice and locked up. Away we go, and we've got that condition. We just put the power down, we speed up, nice and smooth. No wasting fuel, unlocking, slipping in the torque converter, any of that stuff. It just makes things nice and nice and, and cruisy, nice and cruisy. So really cool. If you need more information on this, make sure you go to the website. I'll put the links in the video description down below so you can head on down there and, and check out the full details to the website, boosttech.com.au. Pretty good stuff. Well done, guys, on the kit. Very nice and easy install. Love these ones. If you're looking for more information on how to do up your D-Max, different how-to videos, and how-tos on all sorts of different stuff. That's what this channel's all about. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one that are coming out soon. But other than that, guys, as always, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.